Hi, Hi Kitty Wink, Wink listeners. listeners. I'm Juliana. And I'm Lindsay. Glad you're all here for story time. Okay, open hearted, playful, and intelligent listeners. This is episode number 20 of our sports series. Make sure you check out our website, kittywinkcrew.com, for information about us and our events. And while you're there, feel free to sign up for our monthly newsletter. You won't want to miss the fun activities and ideas we share. Our mascot and octopus pal, Ozzy, is also thrilled to have you as a member of the Kitty Wink crew. Together, we make an amazing team. Yes, we do. All right, Team Kitty Wink. It's time to guess the sport in this story. Lindsay, we are ready for the three clues. Okay, clue number one. This is my favorite. You wear goggles for this sport. Not my favorite part of it. This is the best part. The first goggles were made from tortoise shells. Wait, like real tortoise animal? Yes, yes. I I think I need to look into more details on this, but yes. (laughs) Clue number two, athletes in this sport have very flexible ankles. Fun fact about that, professionals can often touch the ground with their toes while they're laying on their backs. What? I know. Doesn't it make you want to try that? It really does. Ankles. Okay. Okay. And tortoise shells. What's your third clue? Okay. This one's helpful. Water is a big part of this sport. Oh, I feel like that probably is the most helpful for me to figure it out. Wow. Lindsay, these have to be some of your best clues you've ever had. You've said that before. (laughs) Well, they're great. You're great with clues. Oh, thank you. Could it be, uh, let's take a stab at this, swimming? Yes. It's about swimmers participating in the Special Olympics. Awesome. Listen for geometry and geography in the story. Remember, geometry is mathematical and geography is about locations. Let's go, team. Come along with us. It's time to listen and then we'll discuss. Buddy, go, team. Can we? Celine is an extremely talented swimmer. She swims every morning before school with her teammates. Before school? (laughs) That must be early. It is. She's up at 5 a.m. every morning to head to practice. And then many days she has practice after school, too. Celine and her teammates are practicing for the Special Olympics, so they're working extra hard to make sure they're ready for one of the world's biggest sporting events. No kidding. The Olympics and Special Olympics are both huge sporting events that include people from all over the world. If you've never heard of the Special Olympics before, it's the athletes with intellectual disabilities. There's also the Paralympics, which is for athletes with physical disabilities. Celine is working on competing in the Special Olympics. Yes, she is. And like you said, athletes come from all over the world. Celine lives in Paris, France. And I have to point out the fact that some people refer to France as le hexagon (laughs) because it can be drawn using six lines like a hexagon. We talked about hexagons in our first story about soccer, but I just had to mention that shape again here. Love it. Oh, that is so interesting. And now that you mention it, I can totally see that. I thought you were going to mention how delicious the food is in France, especially the cheese. Did you know they produce more than 1,600 different kinds of cheeses? Why would I, as someone who's lactose intolerant, mention their delicious cheeses? How dare you bring that up? (laughs) Oops, sorry. But yes, Celine loves the delicious cheese in her beautiful hometown. But above all else, she loves swimming. And now that she's eight years old, the minimum age for the Special Olympics, she's beyond thrilled to compete in them in a few short months. Her three friends and teammates, Juliet, Josie, and Camille, are going to compete as well. They are all going to compete in the 100-meter race, but they're even more excited about competing together in the 4 by 100 meter race. Oh, tell us more about the 100-meter race versus the 4 by 100 meter race. So the 100-meter race is an individual race. The pool is 50 meters long. So what do you think you do to make it a 100-meter race? Hmm, You swim there and back, right? 50 plus 50 is 100. Yes, correct. And in our next story, we're going to talk a little bit about yards and feet. But meters and centimeters, which are used in the rest of the world outside of America, are so much easier to understand and should probably be used everywhere. Yes, I totally agree with that. They are part of the metric system. And so what I like about them is that 100 centimeters equal one meter. So I find it easier to work with meters and centimeters. 
One meter is just a little bit longer than one yard. And then the four by 100 is a relay race where each of the four of them swim there and back. Once the athlete in front of you reaches the end of their 100 meters, the next athlete dives into the water and does their 100 meters. When all four of them are finished, the race is over. So they really have to work really well together. Yes. Relays are interesting and cool because it's really a mix of individual and team effort. You swim on your own, but you're working toward a team goal. And every practice, they focused on swimming on their own. They each had a lane in the pool that they liked best, and they would practice their freestyle and backstroke. Hey, guys, I'm having a little trouble with my flip turn, Celine said one morning. Flip turns are cool. That's when you get to the end of the pool and you do a somersault underwater and push off and it gets you swimming in the other direction. Right. And it's challenging. So it's not a big surprise that Celine was having a hard time. Don't worry, Celine. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Just watch me. Juliet said and swam down to the other end. Celine couldn't even see her do her turn. And then Juliet just kept on swimming. Well, that wasn't helpful. Celine said under her breath. Hey, Camille, are you free to help me with my flip turn yet? Uh, not right now. I'm trying to get in a whole mile before school, Camille said and kept swimming. They're in a 50-meter pool, so she had to do 32 laps. Celine had to get out of the pool to go all the way to the furthest lane to ask Josie if she could help. Uh, Josie? Celine tried to get her attention, but she ignored her and kept swimming. Josie! Celine tried again, but it was no luck. It seemed like Josie never brought her head above water to listen. Oh, well, I guess I'll go work on this by myself, Celine said to herself. She got back in her lane and swam beautifully down to the other end. She flipped and, ugh, she missed the wall a little bit. Oh, no. Only one of her feet pushed off the wall. If both of her feet touched, she could get a much better push and go farther faster. She kept working on it. Every once in a while, she got it. But there was something she was doing wrong that she couldn't figure out. It just made her turns inconsistent. Once they got out of the pool, at the end of practice, they had a little time to chat before they headed off to school. Okay, ladies, everyone was looking great this morning. I can't wait for the competition this weekend, Josie said. Although Celine knew Josie wasn't paying attention to anyone else during practice. How could she say they were all doing great when she didn't even see anyone else? Ah, that's frustrating. And wait, was Josie talking about the Special Olympics or did they have a different tournament that weekend? They had a different tournament that weekend. It was actually only a relay competition. They were excited to compete together in the 4 by 100 freestyle relay. Celine was excited, but she was also pretty nervous. This competition was in Paris, right by the beautiful Eiffel Tower, and was just local swimmers. They got ready by their lane. Josie was first, then Juliet, then Camille, and Celine was last. The whistle blew, and Josie dove in like a dolphin. She swam so fast. Go, Josie, go! They could hear her family cheering for her. She flipped around and came back, and Juliet didn't miss a beat. She was there and back before they knew it. Then it was Camille's turn. When she got back, their team was in first place. Celine just had to keep the lead. This is so exciting. She swam down to the end, flipped, and ah, shoot! She miscalculated the wall again and only pushed with her pinky toe. No! She tried to make up for it and pushed her strong body as hard as she could, but alas, she lost too much distance and they ended up coming in third place. I'm so sorry, you guys. It's all my fault, Celine said to her teammates as a tear ran down her face. No, no, no. First of all, Celine, we still placed. Guys, let's celebrate that, Juliet said. And we're a team. We need to help one another if we want to get first place. Celine, you tried to tell us you needed help, and we didn't help. That's on us, Camille said. Oh, I'm glad they realized that and did not place the blame on Celine. I know. Me too. They graciously accepted their third place award and knew they had some work to do the following week at practice. They came up with a great plan on Monday. Camille and Celine, the two C's, partnered up. And Juliet and Josie, the two J's, partnered up. I love that. The partners took turns coaching one another. They would let one partner get in the pool, swim there and back, and then give tips and feedback. Together, they were making their team as strong as possible, and they were so hopeful that they would get it together before the Special Olympics. And get it together, they did. And that's 
The end. Let's call a kitty wing. Hi, kitty wing. Can you tell us your name and where you live? I'm Gabby, and I am from Jamesville, Wisconsin. Gabby, we're so glad you're here today. So before we started recording, we were talking about how Gabby loves swimming. So Gabby, tell us what happened in this story and what sport was it? Can you tell us a little bit about the story? Yeah. Swimming. Absolutely. You learned it. It's okay to lose. Who learned that lesson? The girls in the story. Yeah. Do you remember how many girls were on that team? Four. Do you remember their names? I remember one, Juliet and Camille. Yes, and there are two J names, Josie and Juliet, and two C names. You said Camille, and then also Celine, which sounds like it starts with an S, but it actually starts with a C. And I thought it was kind of interesting when Celine, you know, it's kind of interesting that she was trying to do a, was it a flip turn? Yeah. Gabby, have you ever done a flip turn? Me either. It sounds like a, Pretty challenging thing to do underwater. Could you explain what a flip turn is? It's where you do a somersault underwater. Yeah. And we're going to have the Olympics pretty soon, or the Olympics are happening. Do you think that the swimmers in the Olympics do flip turns? Yeah. And so were these girls, were they, are they part of the Olympics? Yes. They are. They're part of the Special Olympics. So it's not the exact Olympics that are happening this summer. But yeah, they're working together so that they can compete in the Special Olympics. Gabby, what is your favorite part about swimming? Backstroke. The backstroke? And how do you do it? You put your arms, you lay down in the water and put your arms back like this. Do you think it's the most fun way to swim? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I do like almost. Every time I swim in a pool. I like backstroke too, but you don't, you can't see where you're going very well, which is a little tricky. <laughs> but if, use your senses. Yep. You got, you know, Gabby's up for a challenge. I love it. Yeah. Gabby, do you remember where these girls were from? Paris, France. Paris, France. And can you tell us anything? Did you learn anything about Paris? Some people point out of what happened. Yes. And that was something I loved because I love math. A hexagon has six sides. So some people, when they draw the outline of France, it looks a little bit like a hexagon, like it has six sides. Yeah. There's another fact about France, but it had to do with a food item and how they had 1,600 or 1,600 different kinds of something there. Do you know what it was? Cheese. Yes. What's your favorite kind of cheese? String cheese. <laughs> String cheese is a solid choice. Solid pick, Gabby. Mm -hmm. I have been to Paris, France, and I've had some stinky cheeses while I was there. <laughs> <laughs> but Gabby lives in Wisconsin, so Wisconsin is like right there with with France, with the delicious cheeses. Yeah, Wisconsin knows what's up when it comes to cheeses. And in the story, Gabby, did you have a favorite part of the story? When they noticed that they didn't, that they didn't help. Oh, yeah, when Celine she kept asking for help but didn't get help. And after their meet, they realized, oh, they might work together. If they help each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought I thought that was interesting, too. Sometimes it's hard to ask for help. Do you ever have a hard time asking for help? No. No. What do you do when you want to ask for help? I say, can you please help me? It's a great that's, way to ask for help. That's awesome. You use your words and you use kindness. I love that. And Ozzy loves that, too. And I like how you pointed out the part where, like, the girls realized they had made a mistake. And that they had to, they had to change their behavior and try to help each other out because we all make mistakes. But 
the way that we react to those is really important. Okay, Gabby, there was something else about geometry in this story. Do you remember what the geometry was that we talked about? The metric system. Yes, the metric system is what people use in so many other parts of the world. And they'll measure saying 100 centimeters equals one meter or like in a pool, they'll measure by meters. So most pools are 50 meters long. So if you swim down 50 meters and then you swim back 50 meters, do you know how many meters you would swim? 100. Yes. Great Wait, job. Okay. I have another, t- I have a tough question. So if there's four people swimming 100 meters each, how many meters would they swim in total? 400. Yeah, be awesome. So they would, when they do their relay race and they have four people, they would do a total of 400 meters. That's a lot. That is a lot. But it would be so fun to be on a team and do that. Have you ever done anything like a relay race, either with running or with swimming? I did a swimming race. And how did that go? How did you feel? And what did you think about that? It was pretty fun. There was not real badges and it was just in a normal pool at a party. And we all decided to do a race. But we made badges. For people who went and I came to coming in second place. That's amazing. Nice job, Gabby. That's awesome. And I love that you made medals for you made medals for people. That's really cool. And that kind of reminds me about when we talk about the Olympics and we talk about there's Paralympics and there's Special Olympics and there's the Olympics. And it's very inclusive. I agree. It's so nice that there's Olympics out there for everybody. And there's sports for everything, everybody. I think sports are a great way to learn how to be part of a group and how to work together to be stronger and better. And I think the swimming team was really great at doing that too. And I love that they had the Special Olympics to use it as a platform. Yeah. Okay, Gabby, are you ready for a would you rather question from us? Yeah. Would you rather be an octopus with eight tentacles to help you swim underwater? Or would you rather be a stingray and glide through the water with your disc-shaped body? I would let her be a stingray. Ooh, tell us why. Because they have a, a poisonous tail. Like a poisonous little thing that sticks out. So anything that tries to do it, it will, it can't hurt the stingway. Oh, that's an excellent point. Yeah. I, I automatically thought I would rather be an octopus because I'd like to be like <laughs> Ozzy. <laughs> but I don't know, Gabby, you make a very good argument for a stingray. But I think I have to go with octopus. What about you, Jules? Just because I love Ozzy so much and it would be great to have eight tentacles to hug someone, I would pick, I would pick an octopus. But I actually didn't know about the stingray. Yeah. It makes sense with the name, too, a stingray. That does make yeah. sense. I heard it in Wild Quest. Oh, yeah. great show. They always talk about animals. Yeah. Gabby, thanks for teaching us something we didn't know. We love to learn stuff. Okay, now, Gabby, do you have a would you rather question for us? Yes. Would you rather ride a unicorn or a horsey? Oh, unicorn. For <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think unicorns are so... Cool. I'm not a crazy unicorn. Oh, okay. So like a crazy unicorn or a nice horse. Is it possible to fall off of the unicorn? Yes. Uh oh. I think I would make some sort of belt or I would hold on to its <laughs> horn and I would I would I still go with my unicorn. What about you, Jules? Yeah, I would go with the unicorn too. What when do you get a chance to ride a unicorn? What about you, Gabby? I will let her go with a unicorn. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Gabby. And listeners, we love chatting with you. Goodbye. We hope you enjoyed our swimming story and that awesome conversation with Gabby. Yes, it's so fun hearing from our Kitty Wink community. And we would love to include you on our Kitty Wink team, too. If you want to be on the podcast, email us at contactkittywink at gmail.com. And parents and caregivers, 
check out our Instagram page at Kitty Wink Crew. Thanks for letting us share what we love and for being part of Team Kitty Wink with us. We will end with a reminder from our favorite pal, Ozzy, to lead with your three hearts. That's showing love and kindness with your body, mind, and words. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks for the support. Goodbye. Stories written and read by Juliana Bria and Lindsay Farley. Original theme by Miriam Mayer. Artwork by Amy Nicholson and Maggie Porter. Find us wherever you get your podcasts. This has been a Kitty Wing Crew production. Bye.